Okay, so we're off on a little trip. Just to see if we can dial in the old uh, skills a bit. We're going to be taking uh, the next right hand turn. So we're checking the mirrors, we move over to the centre the position in the road. And we're seeing that's on coming. We're just going to time it right. We're trying not to stop in the middle of the road. Just keep it tickling. Shoulder check before we commit. And round we go into a 40. The old sun's fairly bright in the sky there. It's not giving us too much of an issue, but we might just need to consider that if we turn a corner and it's very straight into it. No central road markings here, so we can use all of the road if we need to, but bearing in mind other road users coming the opposite way may also want to do the same. So we need to be able to stop in the distance we can see, obviously. But also, that can't for anybody else coming around on the other side of the road. So on these narrowish roads, we should half the distance we can see be clear. It's a bit too wide for that, it's plenty of it. There is a gap, there's enough space for both of us to get past, so it's not that much of an issue just yet. You can see the giveaway marks, horrendous road surface, and we're going to be going left. So tuck into the left, cut that left hand channel off, keep it rolling, there we go. A bit of dirt and stuff still on the road, it is dry, but it's cold, so uh, the tire, you know, tire might start up at the temperature, tires will be struggling to get up the temperature. Just keep that in the back of your mind in case you need to do anything too extraordinary on the way round. Still a bit rural, still a bit farmish. Might be some uh, sort of people coming and going. Might be some mud across the road. So just looking to see what we can see. And dropping down into a 30. So just hitting those in that imaginary line. Bang on. But some cars there on the right hand side. I uh, can't see past them just yet. So moving right over to the left. Just to see if we can get an earlier view. Also anticipating oncoming cars being on our side of the road. There's nothing there. There's nobody in between the cars looking underneath the cars for footsteps, that sort of thing. Just keeping the old eyes peeled. Slowing the road, that's going to mean something for us. Could be to do with that junction there on the right hand side. There's nothing there. And we're squeezing around these corners, just keeping it in because of oncoming cars. You know. What's this car doing up ahead of us? Looks like a maintenance vehicle of some sort. He's got that sort of high vis back. He doesn't quite know what he's doing. He's pulling in. Is he pulling in? He's going to do a U turn. Let's just wait and squeeze past. There's no need to go barreling into situations like that where we don't know what's going to happen. We keep the speed down. It gives yourself plenty of opportunity to do something like stop. Okay, horse rider sign. So we just might need to not be too revvy on the engine or, you know, not use the horn if we're going around blind corners, that sort of thing. Keeping out to the left around the corner until we can see it opening up. We did go through a national speed limit sign uh, back along. But as it stands at the minute, right, now it opens up so now we can start rolling on a bit. It's the limit, not a target, don't forget. Now a road sign there, so just looking to see where that's going to be, it's, it'll be this bridge. Nothing on coming, so we're not expecting anybody to be on our side. Okay, cyclist, inside view around the cyclist, just checking these driveways, there's nothing there, that's all fine. Back over to the left-hand side of the road, nicely over, for an early view around the left-hand. And also it keeps us out of that dirty bit in the road. Blending some corners together now, as it starts to open up. We can see where the road's going by the shape of the houses and the trees and the hedge line. Got a cyclist again, inside view. Just give them as much space as you can. 
1.5 meters on a road like this. Two meters on a on a 60 mile an hour road. Got some chevrons. So over to the left, pulling it round as the road opens up, we can bring it back in again. Looking up ahead of us, we've got some signage. What's that telling us? As we get a bit closer, we can see it's left and a right. Pedestrian on the right hand side there. Uh, might have affected oncoming traffic had they been. It looks a bit tight, got some chevrons. Keep it to the left, it's a sharp corner. People cut corners, so the sharper they are, the more you want to give up. And if you're giving up position, you want to give up a bit of speed. So let's just ease around this. Now we can see it's clear. No need for heroics around those corners. And off we go. A bit potholed, a bit dirty. You can see the white line's been worn out down the middle of the road. So it's obviously sort of an unkempt road. We just need to take that into account. There's our sort of dragon teeth. They normally mean the speed limit change. There's our 30. Hit that one. Bang on. Move it over for the car. We're more concerned about people pulling out driveways, etc. 30s. Park cars on the left. Into a 20. Nothing on coming. Just keeping the old eyeballs left and right. Is there any pedestrians about? Is somebody going to jump out between these cars? And on the right hand, on the wrong side of the road, we're coming up to a T junction. Nobody can see us. So if a car was to come hooning in round the left, we'd be right in their headlights. Get out of that position as we can, as soon as we can. Pointing the bike down the road, the direction we want to go. Looking at the nice jack. Okay, most cyclists gave us a nice and clear indication that they're coming in, so we waited for that to happen. You couldn't see it, I had to turn towards it. I'm just mooching down to this next give way. We're going to be going left into a 30. So, again, okay, close that left hand channel off just in case anyone wants to sneak up on the inside. Up to 30. Got the street lights on the telegraph poles. There's no repeaters at the 30. If you look to your left, there's a 20 mile an hour zone there. So if that's a 20 going into that cul de sac, then uh, we should be on a 30, or at least not in a 20. Just give that car that pulled out there a bit of space. And then shoulder check, clip in. There's our 50s. Looking out for pedestrians means there's no pavement then. We've got the long hazard warning lines in the middle of the road, got some good guns. Let's move over to the left out there. Bring it back over so we can see around the corner nice and easy, nice and early. One can move vehicle, moving for that. So just giving up that position of safety. Stay in there a little bit. They've got the snow on the road, what does that mean? Why is it there? Looking up ahead. Perhaps realise there's another slow on the road. Something's going to happen. And they don't put paint down for no reason. It might be just that junction there on the left. Moving in for the cars. Staying in for the corner. Still no pavement for the pedestrians. And on we go. Straighten these out a bit because we can blend these two together. Back over to the right hand side. Early view of that pedestrian. We had the signs for the pedestrians, so we were expecting them to be there, weren't you? You were expecting them there, you saw the signs. Down at the little narrow bit, you can see we've got another junction ahead. Just on the brakes, get down to the right speed, block change into the right gear that we're going to need by the time we get there. Just keep an eye on people coming over to the left, cutting the corners off. Good look left, good look right. Wait for a nice bit of gap in the traffic. It's not going to upset anybody but pulling out in front of them too much. And on we go. Can you remember the speed limit you're in? Check the repeaters. We've got the get-in arrows here, that means there's going to be a white line coming up. 
white lines coming up tend to mean there's going to be a, some sort of corner or something coming around that we could be able to overtake on. We've got the signage there. We've got the cars coming out. If you can gaze up to the left, up over the hedge, we can see it's quite a nice corner. So we can pick a line through this one, drive it round, come back over to the left nice and smoothly for the next corner. Blend these corners in together. Don't deal with them one at a time. Hook them up, join them together. Treat them as just a nice flowing positional change between the two. And at the same time, give up that position for any safety needs that you have. Meaning, give up the way of oncoming vehicles. Got the crossroad sign, looking for cars popping out. And there's a car. Just moving in the road so we can see us. We've got the hedge cutter. Can't quite see behind that one yet. So just easing past, wait until we can see. Behind hedge cutters tends to mean a load of thistles and brambles and nasty stuff on the road. So just keeping clear of that as well. You can see on the left on the edge, nice clean hedge there. Back to an unclean hedge, so no danger of the uh, spikes anymore. And on we go. We're still in that 50. Looking up ahead, we can see which direction the road's going in. Keeping out the way of the junctions on the left, and moving back in front of cars. So, if we can see a junction, we know that cars pull out of them. Let's move out of the way. Until we're convinced that there's nothing in that junction that's going to cause us an issue. And staying over for the oncoming vehicles, then back out to a bit more of a demand commanding. Position. We've got a traffic light sign in red. We've got the junction signs. You can see they're on red at the minute, so let's just roll up to them. Nothing behind us, so we're not going to annoy anybody by slowing down a bit early. And soon if we can get it timed right, so we can just hit the front as they change. For a second, too quick. Can't win them all. Look left, look right, check that those are not going to be any red light jumpers. That happens too often these days. And on we go again. Back over to our nice position in the road as it's a fairly straight. Looking up, see the telegraph poles. You can see, give me an idea which way the road's going. Again, if it's straightening out, just take the easiest route between these corners. Still in a 50, keep an eye on those repeaters as we're going through. There's our solid white line, that's going to tell us something that we need to know. Or at least give us a hint. And now we've got the down and around and the back up. Oncoming vehicle, just move it over to the left slightly. Around the corner and up over the hill. Car pulling out in front of us, not an issue. Plenty of time to do that. Drop it back down to the speed limit. Car waiting at this traffic light, so it's been there for a while. We want to be going left, so we're coming over to the left hand side of the road, avoiding all that leaf litter mud. But just blocking that, uh, that line off if we can. We haven't passed any cyclists or anything recently, so they're not going to want to scoot up inside us, but that's the that's the reason for being over there. It also helps the people behind see the car in front indicator. We're not covering that one. So they know what's going to go on behind as well. A okay, bit of a town. Got some cars coming and going left and right. Just picking our way through at a nice sensible speed. That car just pulled in, expecting people to come out of it dogs and stuff and all that to run around the place. Car appearing on the right. Just kept my eye on that. Cover the brakes. Not really a massive issue, but could have been. So just keep your eyes peeled for that sort of thing. Car's waiting on the left there, is it? Make sure it's stopped. No, it's all fine. Car on the pavement. What's that one doing? That's all fine. 
further you can see and the further you can spot these cars ahead, the more time you've got to plan what you're going to do. Here. All right, so just changing green. Roll into those, just looking right to make sure everybody's happy. Happy to go through that car on the inside who's in the main. And on we go. There's our national speed limit signs, just tacked onto another, another post. Off we go. No need to go fast though, because the lights are on there. And we only have to put the brakes on. Nobody in our left-hand lane, so we may as well use this one. We're just trying to... You know. Now we're going to have a race with the car, are we? Must be ahead of us. So we get there nice and steady. Just checking the lights round. Off we go. So we've still got the car on the right-hand side of us. They might have been turning right. But just keep an eye on the mirror, a bit of a shoulder check, just to see what they're up to. Of course, it's going to prove how fast the car is up to 60. Well done. You should be entering the, uh, maybe the Parry Dakar, that sort of uh, ability and speed. Okay, looks like a dual carriage for this, but it's not, because there isn't a central reservation. So this is a double lane, single carriageway road. And the speed limit will be 60 along here for motorbikes and cars. Got a lorry up ahead, but we do want to turn off shortly. So we don't want to be in front of that lorry and then turn off in front of it. Just bide your time. Take this left hand junction. And then roll up to the inevitable traffic. And no need to rush them, just steady away. Keep an eye peeled on the old uh, left hand mirror, just in case somebody does want to come up on the inside of us to do anything a bit strange. But otherwise, it's just a case of watching the, watching the lights, see who's going to go first, see who's going to go next. Consider going into neutral at this point. Just for a bit of uh, a rest, if you've got a particularly heavy clutch, you could do that. But then you've got to do the ended shuffle. You know, brake, foot, foot, brake, brake, foot, wobble, wobble, side, gear. Just leave it in gear, then you're good to go. Okay, off we go. Good look left, good look right. Just check for jumpers. Nice and steadily away, up to our speed limit. We were in a 60 before, we're still in one. Might not be appropriate to do that speed down here at the minute. And look it up, we've got a speed limit change again. There's the dragon teeth, just to give you a bit of a warning. Sort of slow you down a bit. Strange little junction, got the giveaway sign, got the mini roundabout sign. Looks like the road carries straight on. But everybody seems to ignore that, uh, that mini roundabout, you could tell because it was basically worn out. I think turning right at that one might have been more of an issue than carrying straight on like we did. Just checking what these cyclists are up to, that's why I'm out on that sort of road. Just look out for them. Little kids might have just fallen off in front here or whatever. Pedestrians, what are they up to there? Are they okay. We've got a humpback bridge, so, you know what that means. <coughs> Audible use of the horn. Give it an appropriate blast, a good long two second blast. Yeah, people know you're going over the top of that, that bridge. Might consider not doing that if there was a horse sign, you know, horse rider sign around. She won, but there wasn't one for a long time. So, good use of the horn there. Just lets people know it. Now 
bit of mud on road. Avoid all that if you can. Pick a lane, which is the least muddy. And then start stitching some of these corners together. Over and over to the right for the left-hander. As the left-hander opens up, you can see an oncoming car nice and early. Move it back in to the the left. Got a crossroad sign just there tucked on the hedge. Check left, check right, maybe there. All good. Here we go again. Starting to open there a little bit now. You see some oncoming vehicles, so we'll just move over for those. Back over again to avoid the driveways, etc. checking for cars pulling out. What you're looking for is a bit of movement. You're looking for the movement of a wheel of a car bonnet or something in the hedge that's just going to catch your eye. Got another giveaway sign. Nice block change. Cover that bottom corner off. Avoid the dirt though. Keep it rolling if we can. And off we go. Over to the left and right-hander. Got that slow in the road still. Keep round the corner. When it opens up, there's our national speed limits finally. And off we go. Over to the left to the right-hand corner. Keeps us out of the way of any cars that are oncoming. Staying over to the left for the next right hand corner. Got the junction sign there on the, on the left though. Try to pass that one. Check the junction's clear, that's all fine. And now we can wind up a little bit more. It's just that balance of progress and restraint. No need to go flat out all the time. Just a nice appropriate speed that keeps the, uh, keeps the average up. Smooth. Corner opens up. And on we go. Move in for the cars. Stay in for the next corner. No need to go sort of down the road if you don't need to. Just be efficient with those steering points. Got some chevrons now, so that means this corner is a bit sharper. Moving into the oncoming vehicle, staying in for the sharper corner. We've got another vehicle ahead of us, we can see just disappearing off into the distance. There. Trying to keep a line of sight on that road, up over the hedges. Another giveaway sign. Loads of cyclists there. So just rolling up behind these guys, making sure they're going to be gone by the time we get there. They're not going to be interfering with what we want to be doing. Looks like they're all going in the correct direction. Or the right one at least. <laughs> Which is the other direction. And the, the big 50 sign there, stuck on the giveaway sign. So that tells us where we need to be. Steady away. Nice wide road. Back of the 50. You can ask yourself why. I often ask why. I don't get any answers. Maybe because it's you know, nice and straight, so therefore they've got to lower the speed limit. Don't let it get you aggravated. It doesn't help. Just picking off what we can see ahead of us. So we've got a few cars ahead. 
they're going to give us an indicator of what's going on around corners etc if they go around the corner and the brake lights come on there might be something there so use their eyes because they can see further than you can at the minute got the S-Ben sign first left then right so we're just trying to pick up that one is a 40 gap between the car in front of us. Let's try a day like this. Two seconds is plenty. Look at the price of fuel. Still in the 40 cars ahead of us are going away from us now because of course they uh, aren't behind by the speed limits. Not like us from motorcyclists. Um, one gear down, just a triple through into town. No need for massive position changes in a 30, you're just more concerned with hazards coming out at you from the left. Uh, we'll be then positioning for visibility, for stability. It gives us a good opportunity to stare up ahead to make a plan for what we can see. We've got a big junction sign down the left. We've got some traffic lights. We can see two lanes. Two lanes in one. Pick the best lane. Now, there's no get into lane signs on the road marking the lane you must be in. So get into the one that suits you best. Roll it up, get it moving nicely. These two guys ahead of us should be going straight on because we're in the straight on lanes. Can't assume anything too much. They're not quick away, so I'm just going to jump back into the left hand lane here. And that gives me vision of the car ahead turning right. So I'll leave that mini plenty of room to bypass that one. When he wants to crack on, so he's in the right hand lane again. He's not actually going any faster. There's another two lanes here. They've just changed. We'll stay here. The mini's not actually quick away, so there's no gain from being there. You can see the arrows moving two lanes into one. So right hand shoulder check, make sure nobody else is coming up on the outside. And just ease back over and take that position. I'm going to be going straight across. There's the get in lane sign, so you have to be in lane there. You can't sneak up the inside and do a manoeuvre. could if it was just paint on the road, not because there's uh, signage. Little old fact for you. Just taking over, taking her time. Left hand shoulder check. Nobody's coming around, nobody at the crossing. Big pure traffic on the right hand side here, so let's get out of the way of that. Let's stay over to the left. Because people get bored in traffic jams and they want to do a U turn. We're here, they can see us easier, we can see them easier. The cyclists coming down. Look out for gaps now, looking out for warning signs. Some roads off to the right, people are going to be wanting to pull out. Okay, so keep your eyes peeled. People nudging out of the road. Little behind him, do a U turn. He says thank you very much. We're all happy because we expected that, didn't we? We know that that's going to happen. There's no, or we pulled out in front of me, there's no surprises. Expect things to happen, anticipate them, and events become non events. It's not set up, I don't know the chap ahead of me, but being in the right position at the right speed just means that nothing happens. Okay, can I turn it off, thank you very much, and on we go. Still got the long white lines there, indicator hazard, so still expecting junctions and stuff. No roads quite wide, we're international speed limit now. So 
go. Just updating the mirrors, there's nothing behind us of any concern. Keeping eyes forward now, plenty of parked cars on the left there. Bit of a dealership by the looks of things, might be people coming and going. Just move out the way of those. Keeping an eye on these pedestrians on the left hand side. Plenty of room for the cyclist and the cars to all mess each other there. Try and avoid a pinch point if you can, but there's plenty enough space in this room. Car just turning in. One in normally means one out, so keep an eye on that. We're okay this time. Plenty of width in the road here. And just nice to bimble along, really. You can see some slow signs on the road. We can see some corner markers. It's got a junction there on the right. Plenty of width here, so just as the corner opens up, we can carry on round it. Nothing in that junction there on the left. Junction's on the right, so moving over just to see if we can spot anything in that one. Nothing there, that's all fine. Staying here for the early view around this sort of long, sweeping right-hand corner. Just getting yourself in the right position all the time. See what you can see, make a plan. Staying over to the left, got the queue of cars going up ahead of us, got the traffic light sign, so now we're thinking is there going to be another one of these two lane, you know, let's crack on, you know, drag race type efforts. So we're just trying to keep our eyes peeled on the road markings for that as we come into a 30. So there is some road markings, left hand lane means go left. Now this is what I mean, there isn't any signage to say you must use the left-hand lane. So you could sneak up on that one if you wanted to, and go straight on. But I think people would think you're a bit of a dick if you did that. And as everybody's moving anyway, we'll leave that move for another time. If you do things unexpected, you know, then people are going to have issues with it. If you could get to the front and then go, you'd be right, but what are you going to do? You're in, a, you're in a 30, you're in a 40. It's not like a, it's not like a road where you can get away. <laughs> so, progress and restraint. Get the balance right. Road markings have gone to little, little dashes, so that's just lane markings. Means there's nothing too serious coming up at any point. got the little roundabout coming up. Now we're thinking about straight line in this, but looking up across the top of the roundabout and this car's coming down. Car out the, out the roundabout. These ones coming down, didn't really want to give them the opportunity or the, or the wrong information, so chose to stay with lane discipline there. Car up ahead of us. Nice wide road. There's our national speed limit signs. And that car doesn't seem to be accelerating. So we're thinking about an overtake. We're catching up already though. We've got a solid white line though on our side. So we're just going to bide our time. Solid white line, corner, junction on the corner. There might be something after this corner. Is it going to open up for us? We're in the right gear. We're just watching the lines. We want an inside view. Just waiting. Nothing there. Except the white lines. We've got the junction signs and all that sort of stuff. There's no overtake on at the minute. We've got the left and the right. There might be something after the left and the right. Okay, white lines have gone. Inside view is clear. And just check that there was nothing in that junction on the left, right hand side. And on we go. Junctions and stuff. If there's nothing in them, there's no problem. The car was clearly not going to indicate and pull into that junction at the speed it was going, so don't go give me any of that. Okay, and now we're away. 
dragon teeth markings again. Normally in the KSP change. Car on the right hand side. Oncoming vehicles are stopping in from pulling out, that's fine. And we're just teedling along again. Bimbling along nice and safely. Another big junction sign. Looks like quite a serious one. So we're checking for any markings that we might need to be wary of. Just giving the bike a wiggle because there's a car waiting and there's a car on coming. Just a little wiggle just upsets that sort of looming headlight thing. It makes cars go, what's he doing? And if they're thinking, what's he doing? They're looking straight at you. Top tip there, folks. Give it a wiggle. Whilst covering the brakes and being ready to stop and all the rest of it. It's another line in your defence. Don't rely on it, though. Still in a 40. I can't explain it either. Moving in for the oncoming cars, people are going to start to get frustrated, you know, when there's no need for a speed limit. They're under a 50 now. They might want to do an overtake. It's not the car you can see that's the issue, it's the one lurking behind the one you can see that causes the problems. Like this one, I'm coming. Okay, man, you were just overtaking that car and just stopped there. <laughs> Looking at your side of the road is one thing. Look at the other side of the road, you see a whole host of interesting things going on, which might and could well affect what you do yourself. Got the slow signs. Got to keep thinking. Why have they put a slow in the road? What's that for? Got, this. got the chevrons in the road. What's that for? Now we've got the solid white line. What's that? The slow in the road. What's that for? Oh, it was for that corner. And that junction. Those houses. Maybe there's been some issues there in the past. We can only assume. Okay, crossroads, looking left, looking right, anything coming on the crossroads, nothing there, so that's all fine. Just saw the car come round from the left, that tells us how sharp this next corner is, so moving over to the right for the left hand corner. Same thing again, we've got the right hand, left hand corner sign in the hedge. We've got the S Pen sign, we've got the chevrons ahead of us, we're just picking a nice line in, moving in for the oncoming cars though. Give up a bit of gap. We've got a 30 sign there that we just went past. Ignore that completely. And just, you know, look at the 30 sign again. Rewind the video. Somebody stuck a 30 sign on a wooden post in their garden. Okay. Looks like we're coming up to the motorway. So, anything behind us? No. Anything on coming is going to be an issue? No. National speed limit sign just gone through. Straight line this one. Indicating left because we've got the left hand lane onto the motorway. Timing it right. Looking across the right hand side. Nothing coming round. Keep it rolling. Up onto the M6. And then stay in the left. We have a 56 crossing in between the white paint on the road. You know, keeps it nice and safe. Left hand lane for an uphill slip road. Look it up to the left. Behind that white red car with the spoiler. That's where we're going to land. There he is. Let him come through. Keep a nice two second gap behind him. Checking the mirrors, what's behind us in this lane? Okay, checking the speed, we're on a motorway. There's nothing on that inside lane. So let's get up to speed. Okay, keeping it at a reasonable pace. A 
looking up over the top to choose our next gap don't want to be encroaching on this silver car too much good shoulder check Mori up ahead of us though so we want to come out into lane one check again out into lane two the lorry's going to come out is this car going to come out into lane two as well because it wants to overtake the lorry so maybe move over to lane three okay we're into lane three before the car knew what we wanted to do and then we're right over into lane three giving everybody the biggest gap between us and them that we possibly can we've overtaken the silver car we've overtaken the lorry we're just having a quick inside check to make sure nobody's going to zip up the inside inside the lorry on the slip road acceleration lane still then we're back into lane one because did you know that some of this is going to be news to people we use lane one when we're not overtaking anything i'm not overtaking anything so guess what we're in lane one it's honestly it's not a new concept it's it's how they work so positioning on motorways lanes one two and three here middle of lane one it's perfectly fine we're coming up behind this van we want to move over so a nice indication nice steady away moving over to the outside of lane two as we pass the van because there's nothing in lane three give ourselves a bit of a gap as we pass the van we can come back to the middle of lane two now we're deciding do i stay here for the car ahead i think you know there's plenty of time i'm not overtaking anybody i'll get back into lane one motorways should be nice and relaxed you know take your time there's not a massive differential in speed so you've got all the time in the world to plan what you're going to do next both in front and behind everybody rushes into a overtaken position and then chops in front of you at junctions so just roll off give them their gap that they need that they've taken from you and expect everybody else to do it as well i don't know why people don't just fall in behind they do tend to just accelerate cut in front of you and then they'll um, then they'll get off so we're indicating by the 300 yard post 300 200 100 might not always be yards it's just a 3 2 1 and then we're going to cross the line at the gap in the arrow paint why do we do that well looks professional not running over any white paint stability etc okay got a traffic light sign we've taken the second exit off of this one so there's an opportunity for a right hand lane maneuver but that red car has just stolen that from us no advantage to be had there now traffic lights are out so that's going to cause some confusion so we'll just bide our time looking up over to the right hand side waiting for our gap there it is watching these cars aren't pulling out give them some space 40 see the 40 signs onto a dual carriageway seriously really anyway we'll just toodle along this dual carriageway doing 40 because we're good there's the get in arrows down into a single lane now just do a right hand shoulder check to make sure nobody is doing <laughs> more than 40 coming down past us we've got plenty of run out on these uh, chevrons should they need to but there's nobody behind us we're not holding anybody up we're all good. Give them all a nod. Into a 50. Just nice smooth positioning now. Rolling it round the corner. Not a huge amount of advantage to be had, but it just shows that we're still thinking about what we're doing the exclamation mark sign there that just tells you to keep a, keep a warning out might be some sort of hazard going on that we haven't designed a sign for we're picking back up on these cars okay so we we're doing the speed they're obviously not is there going to be any advantage the speed differential is not great enough to warrant any particular um, 
mod any particular advantage. You're not going to beat the full line of traffic. There's always going to be another opportunity. Too much else going on here, really. You can use that to overtake if you wanted to, but it's all dirty and gravelly and dusty and there's the national speed limits. If the cars are now still holding back, then yeah, let's think about it, but they seem to be moving on now. Keep that two second distance between them and us. Moving over to the right for the left hand, they've got a nice, in, lovely inside view there, the hedge is nicely far back away, you can see up the road, moving in for the oncoming vehicles, getting back over to a nice position again, watching the cars and the lay-by, treat lay like junctions, are they going to suddenly pull out, are people on coming going to suddenly cross the road and park in the lay-by, that happens more often than you think when people are busting for a, a waz. I'll just dive off somewhere and, and do that. So just a nice, steady run. Just having a little sniff at this one. Is there something going to come up if we want it to happen? I don't like the look of it. Just drop it back again to a to a following position. Okay, so we're nearly at the end of this little run, this little loop. So hopefully that's uh, that was useful. Um, it's mostly the same thing. Good positioning. Anticipate early. Keep the bike rolling if you can. Look out for other road users. Uh, keep yourself safe and there's always another time to go so just bide your time a lot of the time take those opportunities when you need to um, don't force them patience okay that's the road we turned down and we started off so that must mean it must be time for a uh, Something bacony. We're just moving over a bit. We're indicating right. Don't forget your shoulder check before you turn off. The car on current should cut anybody off from overtaking you, but it's a good habit to get into. Cheerio.